So I reason that if we found these populations where people are living a long time, 80% of the answer's got to be something that's non-genetic, and, and, and theoretically, we ought to be able to track that down. It'd be great to talk about what are the blue zones and how, how were they discovered kind of empirically and what are they and who are they? It, I, I, I'd say blue zones is actually first and foremost a concept. And instead of looking for answers to longevity in a Petri dish or a, a test tube, um, to identify populations that have actually achieved the outcomes we want, which mm -hmm. is live a long time largely without chronic disease. Uh, and stay sharp till the mm -hmm. end, by the way. And um, there is a generally established um, uh, law that only about 20% of how long we live as a population is attributable to genes. The other 80% is something else. Mm -hmm. So I reason that if we found these populations where people are living a long time, 80% of the answer has got to be something that's non-genetic. And, and, and theoretically, we ought to be able to track that down. Um, the first part of that puzzle was really hard. Uh, we uh, tracked down demographers, and these people are they're population experts, and they're, they're, they're typically mathematic, mathematicians and statisticians, but they're able to parse through worldwide census data to identify populations where it's reported they're living a long time. You know, we're interested in not only centenarian concentration or centenarian rate, as they call it, um, but actually middle age life expectancy, because that factors out middle, uh, infant mortality, which mm -hmm. really skews things. And, um, but the first, you know, before we do any of these expeditions, we went and verified ages, because there's a lot of places around the world that have asserted to be long lived, and people either didn't know about their ages or lied about their ages. And mm -hmm. we actually confirmed that in Vilcabamba Valley of Ecuador, People don't have birth certificates, so we assume they're not right. And uh, the caucuses, people were lying about their ages to elude a draft, Stalin's draft. And so we're really careful about that. Mm -hmm. And once you find the population, then um, I had a very good team of academic advisors who helped us go to each of these places to find the correlates or the, um, or the uh, common denominators. That brings us to um, what are the blue zones? And, and there are five areas that we've confirmed where people are living the longest. The longest lived women in the world, Okinawa, Japan. Mm -hmm. Longest lived men, uh, the highlands of Sardinia. Uh, the islands of, um, uh, or island of Icaria, Greece. Uh, they live about eight years longer, half the rate of cardiovascular mortality, um, and about a fifth the rate of dementia mm -hmm. that we have in the United States, which is really interesting. The Nicoya Peninsula of Costa Rica, half the rate of middle age mortality. They spend 1 15th the amount we do on healthcare. Um, and that sends a really strong signal, I believe, to policymakers that uh, you know, we don't have to be spending $4.3 trillion a year to have a healthy population. Yeah. We're, we're deploying it wrong here in America. Yeah. Yeah. And then the United States is among the Seventh day Adventists, who are conservative Christians who. Um, are living, depending on how adherent they are, four to seven years longer than Americans are living, their California counterparts. So mm -hmm. these are populations that I think have something to teach us. Mm -hmm. And those, the, the, the population of Adventists, they are an urban population, correct? Uh, you know, in in Loma Linda, the urban, suburban, mm -hmm. probably closer okay. suburban, but um, yeah, the Adventists, remember, there's 25 million Adventists all over the world, mm -hmm. and they live in rural populations, and they also live in cities. But the one we studied the most was um, Loma Linda, California, which is kind of a, yeah, it's not really urban. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but how does that compare maybe to the other four places that you mentioned? It's a bit of an outlier, and uh, not all of my team agrees uh, on its blue zone status, but um, uh, I was interested in the longest lived population in America and they achieve it. I would say they're alike insofar as they have a very similar diet, mm -hmm. mostly plant-based, but also they're remote. They're culturally remote. Um, the, all the other blue zones in a sense have, have 
insulated themselves from the ravages of the standard American diet and our obsession with comfort and ease. And um, the other blue zones have done so by being geographically remote. Mm -hmm. And in this one, you know, they've, um, they, they sort of portion them or, or fence themselves off from the rest of the world in that they celebrate their Sabbath on Saturday mm -hmm. uh, instead of Sunday. So, you know, if, they're, if you're a strict Adventist, your kids aren't going to play football Friday night and you're not going to the dances and you're not going to the movies and Saturday morning you're focused on, on your faith and you're going to the potlucks and, and you're taking the nature walk on Saturday afternoon and you're not doing much of anything until the sun sets on Saturday night. And that has an effect, uh, in my observation, that uh, Adventists tend to hang out with other Adventists. Mm -hmm. So you have this sort of positive feedback loop when it comes to behaviors and, and lifestyle habits. And since the ones the Adventists tend to follow are, you know, don't drink, don't smoke, eat plant-based, low spice, uh, uh, focus on your spiritual life, uh, put your family first. These are all fundamental Blue Zones idea that the Adventists are are uh, adhering to largely because of their religion. <laughs>